Hello, I want to talk to you about storytelling. Mostly visual, mostly in comics. As Prophet ended its overarching complex and complicated story, Brandon Graham, Simon Roy, Yanis Milonoyanis, Farrell Dalrymple, and so many others completed one of the best sci-fi comics in ages. I want to pay tribute to its simple and economic beginnings. Back in 2012, there was only Brandon Graham, Simon Roy, colorist Richard Ballerman, and letterer Ed Brisson. Back in 2012, there was only John Prophet exiting his long-buried hibernation pod, only to be met shortly thereafter by the hungry Tulnaka. And in the fight that ensues, the authors embedded much of what the series is trying to accomplish. Prophet is a comic about the familiar, becoming strange and distorted. Prophet is a comic about bodies eating, dripping, sweating, fornicating, shifting and changing. Here this is apparent both from the gaping maw of the beast and from the physicality, the fleshiness Simon Roy gives his drawings. Bodies don't die in Prophet, they become, but about this another time. Prophet is also a comic that masterfully and elegantly tells stories. This page is a wonderful example of unpretentiously using figure drawing, perspective, and composition to create tension and satisfyingly releasing it. John manages to escape the hungry jaw. This brings down the tension in the scene but doesn't release it. Both of them are occupying a similar space in the panel. More than that, both of them are in vulnerable positions and unbalanced dynamic poses. Here, now, they are again equals, but not for long. Then, their powers are at an equilibrium. The reflection in John's knife not only helps to maintain the spatial continuity, to let the readers know where the beast is, but lets his weapon and Tulnaka's malformed teeth occupy the same space. This is both topological and semiotic communication. They are again able to inflict damage upon each other. The tension begins to rise. Then comes what I consider to be the smartest choice in this sequence. A less inspired artist would jump straight to the blow, or even worse, would extend the sequence showing basically the same report of forces only from a wider point of view. Roy instead tightens the tension just a bit more, putting Tolnaka's teeth in the foreground, large, imposing, piercing, making John's knife seem dull and almost like a toy. Even more, Prophet himself looks like he's about to be devoured like a snack by the strange animal, being placed just between her jaws. There is an explicit sense of danger. Only then he gives us the result. A strong image in itself, their bodies forming a V pointing downwards under the force of the blow, a great amount of blood sprouting from the wound. All of this together with the build-up making the final blow even more satisfying. Then, as I've said, in Prophet, bodies only become something else. This is a great series, one of the modern treasures of the medium, and it is very much worth checking out for the strange and tragic characters, for the brimming imagination, for its confident storytelling. 